Come on, let's let's everybody stand. Come on, as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, come on, and into his courts with praise. Come on, be thankful unto him and bless his name. We serve a great God, am I right? Come on, am I right, heritage? We serve a great God, and he deserves a great praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm free. Come on, say it again, say, neighbor, say, I'm free. Now let's bless God today and declare freedom in this house, amen. Put your hands together. Come on, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. There you go. Freedom, yeah. Freedom, yeah. Free. Everybody, freedom, say. Free. 
the truth and the life. Truth and the life. No one gets to the Father. Yeah, except, except that they come.
with the gas bill too. In the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, I will trust. In the Lord till I die. Put holy hands together and let's bless him. Come on, put your hands together if you're going to trust him. Come on, put your hands together if you're going to trust him. Come on, put your hands together if you're going to trust him. Come on, put your hands together if you need to trust him. Come on, put your hands together if you know you can trust him. Come on, lean back to your own understanding. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many trust in the Lord today? We'll put your hands together one more time. Let God know you love him in this house today. So great to see you this morning. Heritage Christian Center, put your hands together like you love him today, like there is no other. Come on, somebody. Ooh, good to see you this morning. Go ahead, be seated for just a quick second. Can I take up just a couple minutes of your time this morning? All right. Hey, well, first of all, happy birthday to everybody that has a June birthday this morning or this month. We love you. I saw your pictures. Those were so cute. I saw your picture. I saw your picture. Anyway, happy Sunday, everybody. How are you today? Great. Great. If this is your very first time to Heritage Christian Center, we are so excited and blessed that you chose to be with us this morning. If you put your hand up a little tiny bit, I promise I won't embarrass you. I see, oh my goodness, look at all those hands. We're going to put our hands together, let you know we love you in this house. We're excited you're here today. I see you in that yellow shirt all the way up in the balcony. God bless you. If you didn't receive a first-time guest card or gift when you came in this morning, if you just put your hand up right now, one of these outstanding, see all these hands? One of these outstanding ushers, they are going to give you a first-time guest card. And then when you swing by the information desk to your right when you leave the sanctuary today, our wonderful info booth ladies will bless you with a gift. We just want to make sure you enjoy your time with us today. And then also, after the service, I will be out in the foyer. I would love to know your name, hug your neck. Thank you in person for being a part of Heritage Christian Center because at Heritage, you are a VIP. Amen, everybody. Put your hands together one more time. Let them know you love them in this house today. Also, Pastor Greg, he's out in the prisons today serving God bless him but he had yeah right that's all we're so proud of the whole prison ministry team but I bring him up because he has his annual bishops cup golf tournament coming up I think it's his eighth annual bishops golf tournament I gotta tell you it's a super super fun event but this is his personal baby he puts his whole heart and soul into it I do everything the staff and I do everything we can to get behind him and support him but if you'd like to be a part of that you can go to heritagechristiancenter.com sign up for it I promise you you're gonna have the best time you don't even have to golf good you just just go out have a great time I promise you you'll in Enjoy it. Also, uh, we're going to sing, have a few video announcements, sing, and then Bishop Bloomer is going to take it from there. God bless you again. I'm so happy you're here. Make sure you come say hi to me in the foyer right after the service. So here's some video announcements. Here we go. Celebration. Oh, 
God bless you. I'm Bishop George Bloomer, overseer of Heritage Christian Center. I'd like to invite you to worship with us on Wednesday night in our virtual Bible study. You know, it is said that the ears catch about 200 to 300 overtones and frequencies per minute. The mind will catch that per second. So when a word is spoken to you, it goes in one ear, comes out of the other. Like these keys, keys are access, concepts, authority. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. But the mind, the brain, the spirit is like this cloth. And when we preach the word or speak the word to people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, it goes into your ear and it drops into your spirit and it's held there. I want you to join us on Wednesday night so I can drop some things in your spirit to stir up the word that is already on the inside of you. Would you do that? We teach on series and any question that you have, you can ask us and we'll make a great attempt to answer it for you. And guess what? It won't take long to do it. Overtones and frequencies, 200 plus per minute. We're going to do all of this in about 15, 20 minutes. God bless you. I invite you to worship with us on Wednesday night in our sit and share Bible studies. There's no place like it. Join us every Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. for Monday Night Prayer as we seek God together for His perfect will to be done in every area of our lives and the lives of the people around us. Pastor Greg McDonald hosts an amazing group for men only on Monday nights at 7 p.m. called Real Talk. This group targets real issues with real solutions. If you or someone you know is in need of food, the Heritage Christian Center Food Bank is open every third Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. For more information, please contact Pastor Greg McDonald. Why do we give? We give to make a difference, to touch hearts and change lives. We give to feed the hungry, care for the sick, and comfort those in need. We give to show Jesus to our neighbors, our community, and the world. We give as an act of worship to a God who has given everything. We give because we are the church, the body of Christ, called to be a light in the darkness a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are the hands and feet of Jesus, sharing the hope of the gospel. This is why we give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the beginning of the service, we sang songs that we call praise songs. Those songs allow us the time to shake off the dust and the dirt of this week and the things that are going on in our minds. It allows us that time to shake it off. That's why we're up here being really expressive. But now we're going to enter a time when it becomes relational. Now it becomes a time when we're not, our hands are not out, but our hands are can I get a few people just to stand with me as we take this opportunity to tell him how much we love him? Can I get a few people to stand with me as we take this opportunity to tell him how good he's been and how great he is and how awesome he is and how powerful he is? He's the God of mercy and the God of grace. Song says... Our hearts cry, be magnified in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's heights, yeah, to praise and glorify. Unify and know how we love you, know how we praise you, oh, how we worship you, oh, Lord, oh, how we love you, yes, 
listen. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for Maurice. And you can insert your name right there in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart, that's why my heart.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the source of my life. You're the source of my strength. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need is in you. Come on, give praise to the Lord of Lords, to the King of Kings, to the Prince of Peace, to the Great I Am, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, Zion's righteous governor. He's worthy of the praise. Father, we bless you on this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We pray that the word that would go forth on this morning would be a word that you selected for your people's hearing. My obedience in delivering this word should bring us a corporate testimony that it was good for us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Clap those hands and... Say something nice to two or three people around you as you have in your seats. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it's a wonderful thing to give thanks unto the Lord. I'm so happy to see all of you here. That's right. Give them a little hug and, 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 and give them a little, that's right, shake those hands and, and let's rejoice in this house on this morning. Lady Leonard, we thank God for you. God bless you. To the ministerial staff here and the worship team that just did a phenomenal, a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I'm, this, this will probably go down as the shortest message that I've preached here on, uh, on, on today, I believe, unless the Holy Spirit comes through and does something different. <laughs> I want to preach a message this morning. I want to preach a message this morning entitled... This is how I know you're blessed. This is how I know you're blessed. And I don't normally give um, sermon topics a lot. And I don't normally give the sermon topic before I go through the, the formal putting up the text and telling the story, what have you. But my reason for doing this today is that When I tell you the reason why I know that you're blessed, you might not want to hear it. You might not want to come back next Sunday. You might not want to hear from George Bloomer again when I tell you how I know you're blessed. Should I tell you? Oh, you don't sound like you're excited enough. There, there, come on, there's enough of us in here to blow the roof off. Come on, uh, should I tell you? Yeah. Well, let me ask this question. How many of you in here are blessed? You're blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say, so you think you are. Look at your other neighbor and say, are you happy to be blessed? Turn to your other neighbor and say, as far as I know. You're going to talk a little bit about blessings. The two scriptures that I'm going to read is not going to make a lot of sense to you when we first get started. We're going to look at Malachi chapter number three, verse number 
uh, 10 and 11. And I have a reader that's going to help me read, but I want to read this first. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Saith the Lord of hosts. Everybody shout it out, say the Lord of hosts. Host. Oh, you're going to work today. We're going to work together. Come on, shout it out, say the Lord of hosts. Host. Yeah, you sound a little bit better. Anytime you see in scripture the Lord of hosts or the host of heaven, that means all of heaven is in symbole with God. Anytime you see that the, the, uh, there are angels on his right hand and his left hand, he's referring to angels and demons. Oh, I wish I had a church here. It's when God addresses everything that is in the heavenlies, that which is in heaven, the third heaven, that which is in the second heaven, the principalities. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house, saith the Lord of hosts. And he says, see if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings Amen. that there shall not be room enough to receive. Amen. Blessings. Someone shout out and say blessings. blessings. Yeah. And verse number 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. And neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field. He shall not and she shall not, saith the Lord of hosts. I don't know if you see the scriptures the same way I do it. Same way I see it. Matthew's chapter number 16, verse... Uh, Verse number uh, 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A window and a gate. I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A few months ago, there was a story that aired on the news about floods in California. California that had been experiencing uh, droughts for three or four years and forest fires. The atmosphere had shifted. The atmosphere had changed. The, the farmers are praying for, for rain. The fire department is praying for rain to help them deal with this crisis that they're having. And then the weather channel says they discovered an atmospheric river in the sky. A river in the sky that was about 300 miles long when the heavens opened up and the water that the clouds was holding. The farmers got their answer to their prayer. The drought was over, but now there were floods everywhere. A few weeks later, you saw people on top of roofs of houses and cars floating. What they had prayed for had come to pass. What happens when you ask God to open up the windows of heaven and when he does, it's not room enough for you to receive it? Overwhelmingly, a flood came. It was during that time I began to look to try to understand. I'm, I'm a Jamaican, part American and part Jamaican. My parents are, are Jamaicans. And so we know about atmospheres. Uh, Michelle, it is, it, it is said that an atmosphere sustains, a sustained atmosphere creates a climate. A sustained climate creates a culture or tracks a culture to the climate that the sustained atmosphere has produced. In other words, people are drawn 
to climates that they dream of. They go to California because of its near perfect weather. They go to Florida to sunbathe and people who that like skiing go to Aspen and what have you. Everybody understands the principle and the importance of an atmosphere and setting an atmosphere. This room has an atmosphere. The, the worship leaders uh, tapped into the room and they know that there are special needs that are inside the room. And if the atmosphere is not conducive, the miracle can't take place. Jesus, who is the, the son of God and the Eter God in the flesh, the eternal son of God, begotten of the father, could not perform miracles until he created an atmosphere that was conducive for the miracles to take place. Atmospheres are very, very important, extremely important to God, and God knows about it. He knows about it. He performed miracles everywhere, but in Nazareth, he could do no miracles because of the atmosphere a sustained atmosphere creates a climate a sustained climate creates a culture or draws a culture they, they know this in the movie theaters when you go into the movie theater the first thing you do you walk into a room and the room is dark the lights are down and it's dark but they turn the sound <laughs> lights are down the sound goes up and in the lobby they're popping popcorn two of your senses they're going to use they're going to use sight sound I'm sorry three sight sound and aroma and when you smell the popcorn even though you ate before you got in there you're going up there getting the biggest bucket of popcorn that you can. Gouge it with butter and make your way into the theater. When you sit down into the theater, the subliminal suggestion from the theater is to make sure that everyone stops by the concession. So if you forgot to go to the concession stand when you came in, by the time you sit down, a subliminal commercial comes on with them opening up a can of Coke and pouring it over ice. And the sound of soda pouring over ice makes you thirsty and you get up and you go and you get that drink. And even if Coke is not your drink, it could just be water. Subliminally, a message is sent to you. A sustained atmosphere creates a climate a sustained climate creates a culture or attracts a certain type of people when people call for Bishop George Bloomer to preach in conferences all across the country rarely do I get called to go to the conference to preach on marital relationships It's not my climate. I, I, I'm not called on to preach on, on faith or inner healing. It's not the atmosphere that I have sustained when they call me to come and speak. It's normally on warfare or deliverance. I have sustained in my spirit an atmosphere that creates a climate for breakthrough, for healing, for deliverance. And the people are attracted to that, that their need can be met. What is the climate of heritage? What is the sustained atmosphere? You're being insulted if you go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and all the church has to offer you is a dance, a holler, and a scream. You, 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 you might think that that's good church. That's emotionalism. The, 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 the assignment that
that God has given to every believer is to go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and make disciples. And if you don't feel good about it, still, God requires of you to make disciples. Preachers don't pack out houses. Sheep, they get sheep. And this is the reason why the sheep are attacked so they can produce after their kind. Let's do this together. A sustained atmosphere creates what? Creates a climate. A sustained climate creates a culture. When you are planning on going on a vacation, you don't just throw your hand up and wherever you pick, that's where you're going. You want to go someplace that has the right climate, the right atmosphere, and that's what draws you to that place. Great day in the morning. Malachi says that God is going to open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. The principle here out of the text is that anything that God is going to do in the realm of the earth, he's going to do it through a window. And guess what? You are the windows that he's going to do it through. And anytime Satan is going to do anything, he's going to do it through a gate. And guess what? You are the gate that he will use. You better wake up and realize that the people who are in your life determines your climate and your culture. And you can always tell how blessed you're going to be by the people who are around you consistently. How they speak to your life, how they speak into your life, and how they give you permission to behave godly or ungodly. The Apostle Paul, who wrote two thirds of the Old Testament, of New Testament, I'm sorry, two thirds of the New Testament, has a very, very serious job. His job is, is he's filled with all different types of, of challenges. If you read the Galatians, who have bewitched you, O foolish Galatians. Uh, if you're dealing with Titus, if you're dealing with Timothys, I charge you, therefore, to be in season and out of season. Uh, but when he gets to the Corinthian church, he has some problems with these Jews who have become Christians. And he has to deal with all different types of issues, uh, 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 morality, immorality. He has to deal with insects, in incest. Uh, for Corinthians 5, it is commonly reported amongst you fornication. And such fornication is not even named amongst the Gentiles that a man would desire his father's wife. Talking about incest. Uh, he deals with uh, 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 all the, the, the speaking of tongues, all different types of crises. He deals with it. And he lays it out in letters that he sends to the church. In fact, two-thirds of the New Testament are letters that the Apostle Paul wrote to the pastors or wrote to those churches as he was establishing those churches. And those are the same principles that we use today. And then the Apostle Paul in Corinthians chapter number, 1 Corinthians 1, 16 and 9. For and effectual. Is closing the door on all of the teachings that he has taught. And this is what he says again. For a great door. For an a great door. An effectual door. Is opened unto me. Is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. And there are many adversaries. Okay, let me try this one more time. A door. An effectual door, a great door has been opened unto me and there are many adversaries. Now let me preach this to you today. Anytime God is about to move you to another level and get ready to call you blessed, 
a demon manifests in the form of a giant and stands in the doorway of what God says he wants you to go through. And if you are afraid of the giant that is standing in front of you, you'll never put your hand on the doorknob and you'll never get to the other side of the blessing. Your blessings are on the other side of adversity. Ah, I, I told you that if I tell you this is how I know that you're blessed, you might not want to come back next Sunday. The truth of the matter is this, is that we have taught people that blessings is a Rolex, blessings is a Cadillac, blessings is a wonderful house, blessings is a Chanel, a St. John knit. Yeah, that might be gravy, but that's not the blessing. In fact, anybody that's ever been blessed and been blessed real good, if you get them on the side, they'll tell you the story of what they had to go through in order to get the blessing. And I come to tell somebody in this room that you are blessed and you can tell the blessing that is before you by the opposition that is, by the opposition that you're faced with right now. And so everybody that thinks that you can dance your way through every storm, you better think again. God carries you through a process. And during this process, Michelle, there are people that are in your life that has the character of the disciples. You got a Judas. You got, you, you got a Peter that will cuss and cut you. Oh, he with you, but he will cuss you out and he will cut you. And, and, and Peter's a dangerous person because Peter is the type that is with whatever the crowd is with. On one side, he's saying over to Jesus, Jesus, I'm with you till the wheels fall off. On the other side, he's saying, I don't know the man. You got a Matthew who is a publican and a tax collector. He, 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 he works with Jesus in the daytime, but he runs a juke joint in the night. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. It's the place, glory be to God, where, uh, 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 where, 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 where the woman goes in and, and breaks open the box of alabaster oil, pours it on his head, and dries his feet with her hair. He's got a Thomas that is with him that doubts everything. And then there's eight others that the scriptures don't even tell us what they do. You'll have people that's with you, you don't even know what they do. They're just with you. A sustained atmosphere creates a climate and if you allow people to talk foolishness to you and you sustain that atmosphere you will create a a climate for lying a climate for deceit a climate for failure A.K. Dobo shot ta 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 turn to two people and say this is how I know you bless this is how I know you bless I'm not judging your blessings by how much gold you got in your mouth. I'm not judging your blessings by how the house that you have here and another location someplace else. I'm not judging your blessing by how many raises you got on your job. Process. Process. He said a door, an effectual door, a good door has opened unto me. But there are many adversaries. Jesus says it this way. Matthews chapter number 5 verses 1 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And he was set, his disciples came unto him. Now stop for a few moments. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. Mm -hmm. And when he had set, his disciples came unto him. Every now and then, God will pull you away from the crowd in order to pour into you. Verse number two. And he opened his mouth and mm -hmm. taught them, saying, uh -huh. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Uh -huh. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the weak. The meek. The weak. Blessed are the Meek. Meek. Uh huh. 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, Woo. for they shall be filled. Yeah, are you hungry enough to get what God has in store for you? Uh-huh. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Wow. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children Blessed of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I want everybody to scream out and say, uh-oh. uh-oh. Number 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Oh, sake. blessed are they which are persecuted. Oh, I, I didn't get a response that I was looking for. Blessed are they that are persecuted. You, you, you roll with me when blessed are the peacemakers and blessed are the meek and blessed are the poor and blessed are those that mourn. But God said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs, for theirs is, the is the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. And persecute you. And persecute you. And say all manner of And evil. say all manners of things against you. Falsely for my Falsely sake. for my sake. This is how I know that you are blessed. Is how you handle the adversity that comes your way. It's all right to be good when good is good. But when things go bad, you got to know who your God is. Is there anybody in this room that knows who your God is? He said, blessed are ye when you are persecuted. There's a blessing in being persecuted. Why? Because God is building your faith and perfecting your character. And we live in a society right now where people know more about church than they know about God. And they know more about noise than they know about the anointed. And the noisier it gets, the more anointed they think that they are. I feel the Holy Ghost in here this morning. And so as a result of that, we get it loud. We think that emotionalism is God. The devil is a liar. He's going to build your faith and perfect your character. We now live in a society where people are very gifted and talented. And gifts and talent has caused us to see the anointing dismissed. We don't even recognize the anointed. Because we forgot who our God is. Uh, the, 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 the old saints used to have testimony service and testimony service was very very important testimony wasn't just about them but it was about everybody they was going to come in contact with uh, testimony service was your bragging rights to talk about how good God has been in your life and what the Lord has done testimony service glory be to God uh, uh, would go like this uh, the, the enemy took my child the enemy did this he did that he did the other but God Oh, oh, the whole church was waiting for the but God to show up, y'all. We listened to the whole church. We get, get, to, get to the but God because we knew that God was going to turn things around. But it was also how God would take a person and let that person go through 10 years of emotional and mental breakdown, 10 years of a divorce, 10 years of financial collapse, 10 years of accusations and criticism, go through pure hell and deliver them in the 10th year and then bring them in contact with someone who's going through the same thing and you tell them your testimony and they get set free in 10 minutes from what it took you 10 years to go through. That when you have a testimony, you ain't going through for yourself. You're going through for everybody you're going to come in contact with. In fact, say to your neighbor, be careful how you deal with me. I might be your answer. He said, blessed are ye when you go through these storms. Blessed are ye when you go through these trials. Blessed are ye when they revile you, when they dog you out, when they say all manner of things against you. And how do I handle What's coming at me. And God has allowed this thing to come at me. And at the same time, he's telling me to hold my peace. He said, I'm going to fight your battles. And we keep on saying to God, because we're human, win. The walls of Jericho was very, very high. But the width of it was a quarter of a mile. The generals parked their chariots on the walls of Jericho. In the city of giants, 
And God spoke to them and said, listen, I'm going to give you Jericho. But I'm not going to give you Jericho the way you think you're going to take it. You're not going to take Jericho with spears. You're not going to take Jericho with guns and gunpowder. You're going to take Jericho with creating an atmosphere. And I'm telling heritage, glory be to God, years ago, a man by the name of Dennis Leonard set a sustained atmosphere. And the sustained atmosphere was I refuse to pastor a church that looks all white. I refuse to pastor a church that looks all black. It must reflect heaven. I, well, I, wish I, had to, I wish I had a church here today. It must reflect heaven. Just a few weeks ago, New York City was under an atmospheric attack. A fire broke out in Canada. The wind blew, great day in the morning. The wind blew the smoke across into New York, New Jersey, parts of Philadelphia, all the way from Canada. Shifted the atmosphere. The atmosphere got confused. What was supposed to be a rainy day was a sooty day. Every now and then the enemy understands that if I can shift the atmosphere, I can change your thinking. If I can shift the atmosphere, I can make you think that it's something that it is not. The Bible says, take heed for it shall come to pass that at summertime it shall be winter. <sighs> and when they went to Jesus and said, Master, show us a sign. He said, you wicked and uh, adulterous generation. You look into the sky and you can tell when it's pink. You can, you can forecast the days. Yet you ask me to show you a sign. Uh, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after signs. We're living in a time and a day where people are looking for miracles, 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 miracles. That's being worked at the hands of magicians. Folks who are faking things. But a straight, serious atmosphere that comes from God cannot be tricked or manipulated. And I come to tell you, this is how I know that you're blessed. I know that you're blessed when all hell breaks out and you still lift up your hands and open up your mouth and give God praise. When the atmosphere shifts and you say, I don't care what the devil is thinking or what the devil is saying. One thing I do know, I know in whom I believe in and I am persuaded that he is able to keep me from falling and keep me against that day. Ah, this is one of my favorite scriptures. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. I come to tell you, glory be to God, that God is about to bring us back to the atmosphere. And how did the climate get like this? It got like this because, uh, glory be to God, the atmosphere was saturated with prayer and intercession. The atmosphere was an atmosphere that dealt with people's direct needs. When you came through the doors, you knew that you was going to hear a word that was going to turn things around for you. Uh, the prophets of old possessed power. Not only did the prophets of old prophesy, but they could speak to the winds. Jesus taught this principle to his disciples when they was on the boat that night and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the storm had come thin, a, a, a scroll had come down the lake and put the boat in great jeopardy and Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the ship and Peter goes down and wakes him up and Jesus rebukes him and says, must I do everything for you? You possess the power to speak to the atmosphere and shift atmospheres. I don't care what it was like when you left home today. If your house was not in order, you're going back to an atmosphere that you just shifted. Glory be to God by words that you spoke. Who am I talking to in this room right now? Because I know I'm not talking to myself. There's someone in here that needs to understand that in a few days, you're going to see the almighty hand of God. In a few days, glory be to God, he is going to open you up a window and every 
gate of the devil will be shut down. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Uh huh. Every gate of the devil will be shut down. There is a downpour that's about to come. And God is going to bless you in such a way you're going to have to pray the second time and ask God to shut up the windows of heaven. I can't take it no more. It is just too much for me. Uh, there's been a level of warfare that I've been fighting through in the name of Jesus. And as I'm preparing messages for the house, uh, I start to go in my brain and say, let me preach this, let me preach this. And the Holy Spirit let me go with that for a little while. And then he steps in and said, well, this is what I want you to talk about. And then I go over there and I begin to prepare over there. And he serves me. He said, this is what I want you to talk about. And I turn back to the Holy Ghost and said, make up your mind. The Holy Ghost said, watch your mouth. Uh -huh. I'm trying to see if we're connected to each other. I'm trying to see whether or not you can hear what I'm saying. And in this season, we need to go back to hearing what God is saying. Ah, we are about to, to sustain an atmosphere of prayer, of worship, of dedication. What you experienced this morning when the praise team was up, when the worshipers was up, and they began to explain to us the difference between praise and worship. And if you are not a praiser, you'll never enter into worship. Ah, if you ever want to get God on your side just start praising him God finds praises irresistible praises to God is like catnip to cats if you open up your mouth and start giving God praise he will do what you ask him to do I wish I had a church in here you can sit on your seat long as you want to and say to the preacher preacher move me and nothing will happen but if you open up your mouth and cry out to God and say God I thank you I love you it's not what it's supposed to be but I'm giving you thanks right now for what it is and until things get better I'm going to bless your name I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord I feel the angels of the Lord descending in this house and God is going to sustain the atmosphere ah sata devil you are a liar you will not steal you will not rob we gonna march into the enemy's camp and take back by force everything the devil stole from us ah somebody shout out say, i want it all back everything he stole from me my health my wealth my joy my peace my healing you are a liar this atmosphere is being saturated with prayer intercession the Holy Ghost and miracles when I think of the goodness of Jesus when I think of the goodness of Jesus when I think of the goodness of Jesus sound man be a little bit more generous with me when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me grab somebody and pull on that neighbor say oh neighbor I got a feeling come on shake that neighbor shake that neighbor touch that neighbor touch that neighbor and say oh neighbor I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right because God is shaking things. God is breaking things. God is turning things. He's saturating the atmosphere. He's moving the dark clouds. He's bringing into, bringing to pass the things that he spoke. This is what God said. Just a little bit more sound for me, sound man. Ah, what God spoke, he meant it. He said, have not I said it? I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I will repent if I spoke it I will do it y'all ain't hear what I'm saying he said if I spoke it I will do it now we need to go back and figure out what God said and stand on what God said he said this is a great house he said this is an anointed house he said healing is in the house he said miracles are in the house so we sustain the atmosphere to create the culture that's coming to the gathering ikata shokobo ratarama he will do what he said 
he would do. Touch somebody and say, I got a feeling. Touch him and say, I got a feeling. Say, Come on, touch him say, I got a feeling. Mm. I got a feeling. There's a few of you here know what I'm talking about. I got a feeling. I can't explain it. I can't articulate it. But I know in the sanctuary of my soul that God is about to do something that he has not done in a long time. The meteorologist said on a Thursday while people were coughing eyes were burning in New York City put masks on there was nothing political that day about whether you should wear a mask or not even the folks who talked against masks had one on on Thursday he gave a prophetic word. He said, by Saturday, this is going to clear up. He was able to look into the storm and see how long, how much strength the storm had. And could the storm, could the smoke stay longer? And the people began to prepare themselves. And literally, Saturday, by about four o'clock in the afternoon, the sun that they hadn't seen in eight days showed up. That which you could not see for a few months, the sun is about to shine. All we have to do is sustain the atmosphere and my house shall be called a house of prayer and my house shall be called the house of prayer let's do it together and my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves a den of thieves I'm not running from the giant standing in front of the door I got a stone in my pocket and a sling in my hand I'm going to get on the other side of the blessing there's a scripture in the book of Daniels and it says the third year of the reign of the king Daniel had a dream he said I had a vision the vision was true and the thing that I saw was so but the time appointed was long the next verse said in those days I Daniel was mourning by verse number 12, the text says, from the first day you prayed, I sent the message. But it got caught between the prince of Persia. That's the atmosphere that withstood him one in 20 days. The storm is over. Victory is here. It ain't coming, it's here. And God is going to do supernatural things in your life. This morning at 5 a.m. in the morning, I was up and I was walking in the hotel room. Battling with some things that I know has to do with this morning. Reoccurring addictions, demonic dreams, the enemy trying to rob your confession by habits that's going on in your body. You thinking that you're saved by works, you're saved by grace. 
had it not been for the Lord who is on my side in my life, where would I be? I come against every demonic attack. How dare you devil think that you can come into this atmosphere and work and we not know it. We come against you in the name of Jesus. And I speak to your children and to your wives and your husbands and your family members and your co-workers. And I say to you this morning, be healed, delivered and set free by the power of God. That's the word of the Lord for this house this morning. If you receive it, stand on your feet and give God an applause and thank God for what he is about to do and what he's going to do in this house. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Turn to somebody and say, that's how I know I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed by what the enemy tried to do to me. I know I'm blessed by how he comes after me. I know I'm blessed because of the attacks that's on me. I know I'm blessed. The last woman of God, the last part of the text says, for great is your reward in heaven. I don't mean to be crazy. In this season, I ain't waiting for heaven for no reward. I'm going to get the reward on earth. You didn't hear what I said. I'm going to get my reward here now on earth. You are a window. Don't be a gate. Do not allow the enemy to use your senses to manipulate your mind or your mindset. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Understand, if you're poor in spirit, if you're meek in heart, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. It's how he works. It's how he works. I don't understand it, but that's how God works. I don't know about you. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I, I can smell fresh cut grass on a hot summer evening as the sun is getting ready to go down. The sprinklers are coming on. The atmosphere is changing. As God is getting us ready. To fulfill the call that he has given to this house. And our assignment is to look like heaven on earth. And man, we're doing a pretty good job at it. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. In Jesus' name, amen. There may be someone in here today that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if the Lord were to come today, you would be lost. This is the time for each person who is here to do personal evangelism. I pray that everyone in this house would become an evangelist, sharing the glorious gospel. And if you can't share the gospel, live the gospel so people can just look at you and tell there's something different about you and different about your life. Ah. It doesn't matter where you've been and what you've gone through in the past. The only thing that matters is the here and now. Jesus wants to save you. He behold, I stand at the door and knock and if any man open the door, I'll come in and sit with him. Is there one that don't know the Lord? And would like to be born again today. Is there one? Is there one? The altars is open now. For victory. For salvation. For deliverance. If you're here this morning. You heard the word of the Lord. <clears throat> you said Bishop. I'm already saved. But my faith was wavering just a little bit. And this morning. I was strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. And now I want principalities and powers to know that I'm standing in my faith. The altars is open. Let me pray for you and pray with you. In the name of Jesus. Bishop, I need a deliverance in my spirit. 
that which I thought I had victory over. I found out that abstinence is not deliverance. Just because you stop doing something don't mean you're delivered from it. I want breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. They're coming from all over the place. Bless you. 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 Come on. Give him praise this morning. 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 Ah, shata taba sata. Rokobo shata Bless you so much. 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 I'm not going to keep you here and make this a ceremony. I'm just going to echo what I preached a little bit about. Some years ago, I stood at the altar in the same place that you're standing. Illiterate, drug dealer first, then addict second. Convict, life, all messed up. But God had a plan. The people that were around me sustained an atmosphere that allowed my corrupt seed to grow and new life to come into me. What's your name? Rolanda. Rolanda, the blessings of the Lord on your life. This, I'm not a prophet, but the things I speak come out of the heart of God. Every attempt of the devil to take you out stops this morning in the name of Jesus. Homelessness, drug addiction, all of those things, abandonment. I break the curse in your life today in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I break the curse in your life. I break the curse in your life. I break the curse. I feel the Holy Ghost in here in the name of Jesus. I break the curse in your life right now in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit, you cannot stay. In the name of Jesus, you have to go. Oh, I wish I had somebody to worship the Lord with me today. Hallelujah. What's your name, man? Huh? Columbus. Every attempt of the enemy to try to make something out of you that you're not stops today if, if every attempt i don't know you i'm not a prophet the things i speak come out of the heart of god but you are a an intelligent brilliant smart young man that's who you are that's who you are and in the circles in the circles of the foolishness you're the one that figures out things. You got to understand that jealousy is a main killer. People will move around you as friends, but can never befriend you because they're jealous of you. Jealous of where you come from. They can see the great things that are going to happen in your life. You're going to be great. You're going to have money. You're going to be successful. That's the window that opened up for you. But the gate is imprisonment. The devil is a liar. We break the curse over your life this morning. In the name of Jesus. What, what, what's your name? What's your name? Huh, say it again. Dequasia. How you doing, Dequasia? I'm going to tell you something, Dequasia. I'm not a prophet but the things I speak come out of the heart of God did you hear a little bit of what I said to him about the jealousy piece for you it's the lying piece not you a liar but it's the company of individuals who are around you that pulls you into the lie those negroes are lying to you they're lying to you lying to you 
lying to you. And your future is bright. Your future is bright. You are beautiful. You are intelligent. These are not just words I'm throwing at you. If you wasn't smart, I would be saying here, you're not that smart. I'm, I'm, I'm that honest. I'm that honest. So I see a window. But I also see a gate. And you spent a lot of time in the gate. Now you got to get out of the gate and get into the window. Now let's have a serious talk real quickly and I'm going to pray for everyone. Your dreams are much better than your reality. Girl, you, you, you do some wonderful dreaming and then you share it with people who talk you out of it. That's over today in the name of Jesus. You're going to be who you see yourself as in that dream. Check the atmosphere. This is the, this is the atmosphere. This is the atmosphere. Hmm. What, 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 what's your name? Beverly. Beverly. Bishop Bloomer, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've, I'm not a prophet. The things I speak come out of the heart. You know, I, my prophecies be on more than people call themselves prophets. <laughs> I want to see my children's children make it. And life is harder now than it was years ago. I don't even know how to pray for them anymore, Bishop. I don't even understand how they respond. They don't have respect or regard for anything. God's heard your prayer. The scripture says, I've heard your cry. I've seen your, seen your cry. I heard your prayers. I said, I've come down to deliver you. In this moment, what's happening at this altar is as a result of prayers that you've prayed. Now, Father, heal that body completely. Add unto her 10 more years of a life that was stolen from her. In the name of Jesus. I hear a chatter in the spirit realm. What is your name? Isaiah. Isaiah. I hear a chatter in the, in the spirit realm. And I want ministers to be real serious for a quick second. I hear chatter in the spirit realm. And that chatter in the spirit realm, uh, when you walked up to the altar, was uh, demonic forces chattering over the rights of your soul yeah uh, um, you things happened from the cradle to right about 15 16 years old today every curse is broken the demons that try to take your mind we break that spirit over it the atmosphere is sustained with prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession releases prophetic insight in the house. You're covered at this altar today in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now. For those that need salvation, we pray for the saving of their souls. For those that need the regenerating of their heart and their mind and their spirit, we pray for them also. We thank you, dear God, that this word this morning is an on-time word to reassign us back to our assignment on rescuing the perishing and caring for the dying. Work miracles in their life today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to touch you with my hand and just release blessings on your life today in the name of Jesus. 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 Bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless you so much. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Bless you. Bless you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Bless you man. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Don't give up on God. For he won't. 
Somebody give the Lord a hand praise in this house. How many of you feel the atmosphere that's conducive for miracles, for healing, for salvation, for breakthrough, for deliverance, for elevation, for promotion? It's in here. It's in here. And it's going to remain like that. And it's going to get thick. 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 Woo! I want you to prepare yourself this morning to bring your tithe and your offering. Remember, the tithe opens up the windows and pours you out blessings that there's not room enough for you to receive. Softly, very softly. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. The minute May comes in, June, July, and August, in Christendom is what they called the summer blues things begin to shift and rightly so folks go on vacation they go families and what got children graduating from school all different types of things happen it's in that time that we need the faithful to not just be priests during the good times but to be kings during the difficult times to support the work of the Lord and I'm going to pray that no summer blues hit us. And I'm going to ask this morning, over and above your tithe and your offering, I'm just going to speak to 30 individuals, and I want you to sow a sacrificial seed of $100. And I want you to do it with joy. I want you to do it with joy. And there's a reason why I ask you to bring it. You're not given to be seen, but when you're defying financial demons you need to be seen giving and whether you do it electronically you just walk up to the altar and, and flash your, your, your device if you're writing a check make it payable to the church you got cash lay it on the altar 30 persons a seed of 100 start walking now get it and start walking everyone else prepare yourself for your tithe the tithe is holy it's not yours it belongs to the Lord I feel the Holy Ghost in this place you're sowing that seed of a hundred come and drop it right at the apostles feet lay it right here on the altar thank you so much god bless you god bless you thank you so much thank you so much he gonna multiply that he gonna multiply that he gonna multiply it 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 get ready with your tithe and your offering get ready get ready god is able to do just what he says he will do gonna fulfill he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on Bishop, I don't have 100, but I got 50, I got 20 that I can give over and above. Believe in God for financial breakthrough in this house. A sustained atmosphere creates a climate. Don't give up on 
sustained climate, <sighs> attracts and draws people, a culture. All tithers, throw those hands up in the name of Jesus. We're going to believe God for your tithe in the name of Jesus. Father, you said that this would open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there shall not be room enough for them to receive. Multiply and bless your people. Help them to do with the 90 what they could never do with 100%. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. They're coming now. Bring your tithe, your offering in the name of Jesus. That are watching online we thank God for you we thank God for you those of you that are a part of Heritage Virtual Church that is literally all across the country all different places I met a few people week before Tuesday night before last they came up and said we live in Henderson but we are a part of the Heritage Church in Colorado and that's all the way in North Carolina yeah I pray for you and pray miracles for you and miracles on your life this morning in the name of Jesus and as you sow your seed the Lord bless and prosper you also ways to sow sow that seed and watch God do miraculous things has everyone given let's prepare ourselves father bless the giver as well as the receiver multiply every gift give it back onto your people good measures press down shaking together running over in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The blessings of the Lord is going to overtake you and overtake your life in Jesus' name. Don't forget the Monday night prayer. Don't forget Wednesdays, uh, the Bible study. I want you to really, really, really be praying for us. We are sustaining an atmosphere that's going to create a climate. And the climate is going to be the attraction of folks their need will be met in this house in Jesus name are you ready for your dinner everyone standing God bless you may the saving grace of our Lord the Savior Jesus Christ the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit the comforter rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus name amen and Lady Linda is going to be greeting you in the lobby today in Jesus name so happy to see so many of you this morning give the Lord a great big hand clap he's able